join me. Let's do some art. So for today's project, I pulled out this old cigar box. It has hinges, a closure, a nice shape, and of course, I will decorate it. I also pulled out a bunch of old paint brushes. These are all messed up, and so I want to use them in this project. Now, I have decorated large paint brushes in the past, and if you're interested, you can find those videos here on my channel. So I start by sanding down the wood just a bit and then I cover it with white gesso. And as you can see, my grandson is helping. He really likes to come downstairs and hang out with me in my art room. And even though he's still in his pajamas, he is ready for action. Now this box will be part of the four core art challenge for March. And of course, when I'm done with decorating this, I will show you the lineup of all the photos you sent my way of all of your projects. And then after that, I will give you the new challenge. So please stick around. Next, I will be using these rubber washers of some type. I was able to cut them in half and I will attach them to my box using my E6000. And you will see a little bit later on what these are for. And next I added some black gesso to the inside. I also gave the box some very simple feet and this is the way it looks now. I did take off the little closure because it was very flimsy and not working very well anymore. Now in order to create some texture, I thought I'd try out this plastic grid here. It's meant to be stitched into for certain projects and it cuts apart really easily so I use some very random shapes and my gel medium and I attach them just here and there all around this box. Now after this I will add a little bit more texture then I will of course decorate the box do some coloring and so on and that whole process will be very easy for you to follow. So I think it's time to turn you over to some music. Like always, you will find any medium I may be using, anything I may have to explain to you in the captions, but I will be back chatting with you before it's all done. Enjoy.
this point, I just want to explain a couple of changes. First of all, the black stripe, I put the original color back to the round edges and I think this way it looks a lot better. I also had some trouble with the uh, glossy accent. I think it was just too old and too thick. It dried very crusty and left some holes. So I don't like it. I will take this whole thing out and try something different with the brighter color. So I will do some repair work here, but then I will get back to my project and I let you get back to the music. So here is my box all completed and I did do a couple of things off camera. First of all, I removed some of the paint off the mirror in order for it to be still reflective and still work as a mirror. I replaced it with a single layer of alcohol ink. Next I added this little dangle of tiny beads, some orange, mostly black. It complements the black on the side. And then I have the butterfly, better than the fly. And I took the red color from its wing and also added it to one of the paint brushes. Then here in the front, I have an opening ring. I have a metal filigree decoration. And then the little hole the box came with, I filled with another metal piece and a tiny label that reads, We Dream in Color. And that brings me to the inside. There is a pretty paper and all the paint brushes. I thought this was a perfect spot to use them on, display them. And I believe it fits to the overall look of the box. I sealed everything on the inside with Mod Podge. So it's nice and smooth. And of course the outside has great texture. Now I think it's really fun to paint over textured backgrounds or little three-dimensional bits, especially with different mediums and lots of layers, because you can achieve this kind of grungy model look, which I really like. But of course I made sure to seal in some of my non-permanent mediums with a layer of either the acrylic paint or the waxes, which are both permanent. All right, it is time to go on to the lineup of all the photos you sent my way from all the projects you made for last month's challenge. Please enjoy, take your time, check out all the details, and I will be back right after.
So it is time for our April Fool Core Art Challenge and I want to start with a big thank you to all of you artists out there who participated in last month's and I really hope you will join in again this month. Now if the Fool Core Challenges are something new to you, please go below in my description box, follow the link to my intro video and there you will find all the information you need to play along. So for this month I did not set a theme and neither is there a requirement on the substrate uh, but I do want to set the scale meaning we will all work really small creating a miniature. Now that could mean two or three dimensional. Now I did do a wee bit of research just to figure out what is an acceptable size to be still considered a miniature and it seems to me that six inches six by six by six inches anything you create that fits in those measurements would be considered a miniature now don't quote me on this because there are lots of different miniature scales out there and miniature artists work in different ways to make it all fit together be in proportions and so on but we don't have to bother about that. I think for this challenge the important thing is to create something small, something that is not larger than six by six by six inches. Now for a visual I can show you this canvas board. This is six by six by six. As you can see you can easily hold it in your hands. Now of course you can work smaller. You could use a proper canvas in any size. Maybe you have a wooden substrate you like to work on. Now this would work great for paintings, for collages, for reliefs, but you can add uh, texture paste, any medium you like. You can work with paper mache, fabric. There's no end to what you can use to create a miniature. There are also miniatures that live in boxes or a miniature box on itself is a piece of art or can be. Uh, you could work with a frame. Many people create little sceneries in these metal tins but uh, of course two-dimensional uh, painting of your liking, a collage with whatever subject uh, you uh, want to illustrate, it all works. So it's really up to you what you would like to create, just keep it small. So that's the overriding idea of this challenge. Create some miniature. So number two, we would all include at least one animal. It could be more. So again, that could be of course two or three dimensional depending what you're working on. Now for the two dimensional, you can paint an animal, you can collage, you can definitely do more than one animal and it can be uh, the focal point of your piece of art but it doesn't have to be. It could also be somewhere in the background. Now I pulled out a few bits and pieces that could be used if you create something three-dimensional like a diorama or an assemblage, something along those lines. So I have a little cat figurine right here. I have a little uh, wooden fish. I have a little uh, necklace, uh, what do you call it? Not a pendant, maybe it is, yeah. Something that hangs on a necklace, so it's a little elephant. I have a tiny little piggy from a game from a kid's game. 
and then some charms there are some birds here there's a dragonfly and so on so what type of animal you choose and how big it is in comparison to your project it's completely up to you and if you work uh, three-dimensional and you add something that moves or swings open and if that exceeds six inches that is okay as long as your base sticks with those uh, measurements and next we will all include at least two arrows now you could paint those you could draw them you can collage them or maybe you have an arrow somewhere in your stash that is the right size and that you can include so let me give you a few examples i have this thing which is of course way too big for this project but just to show you it's just simple cardboard with a little bit of book pages it was part of another uh, project or maybe you have some paper die cuts i happen to have this one lonely paper arrow here i think you can see it better here and then I have a couple of charms. Now this is a bow and arrow, but that's okay. There is an arrow on each one of these. I also find a dice that has an arrow on it. You could make an arrow out of fiber. You can make it out of rope. You can use matchsticks, whatever you like. And of course those arrows, again, could be more prominent or more hidden. They could be part of a structure, part of a tree. They could be part of the frame. Whatever you like it to be, it could bring meaning into your project or just be part of the decoration. So it's up to you what you create and where you're going with this challenge. So those were three points and now for number four I have nothing here to show you because I was thinking in order for all of us to know uh, how big your project actually is, because there's a big difference between working six by six or maybe this one which is only two by two, I would like you to make a photo where you hold it in your hands. That way we can very easily see what scale you use and how big it is. But make sure you go all the way up so we get a really good view of the whole project. So that would be number four. Now if you don't have enough hands to hold it and take a photo, please just borrow some hands to do either one of it or do it with one hand, that's okay too. So those are all the points. I think this sounds really fun. I look forward to it. Again, there is no limitation of what you can create and what you use to get it done. So in review, we will make a miniature two or three dimensional, not bigger than six by six by six inches. We will all add at least one animal. You can add more. We will all include at least two arrows. You can do more. And we will send in a photo where we can see the scale of the project because we will hold it in your hands or somebody's hands or one hand. Either way you can take a photo best. Make sure it's as close as you can get it. All right, that's it. Thank you so very much. I think uh, that's all I had on the challenge. Like always, you will find a list of the four core things at the end of this video as well as below in my description box. If you have any questions, just leave them below in the comments uh, or write me an email. I always love to hear from you. Please, when you send me an email, make sure you put the four core, hashtag four core and the months into the title it just makes it a little easy for me and don't forget to include your name all right i think that's all for today i will be back when my next project is done in the meantime you stay well you stay creative and bye bye for now mm -hmm.